Welcome to a new Begijn of a video. My name is Tommy and this is already the second how-to video. In this video we're going to talk about transitions. Uh, I believe one of the most difficult parts of the training because writing good transitions that's really super super difficult. If you already seen our previous videos you could see that there is in our vision of the training not a handbook this is how you need to do it. What is really important that you learn to listen to your horse. The horse actually tells you what to do. If they want to go forward, you go back. If they want to go back themselves, you go forward and so on. So I really hope uh, yeah, you can benefit from this video. It's not going to be always perfect like in the previous video. It wasn't uh, perfect all the time, but I think it gives a good uh, idea of how it should be and hopefully in another videos I can show you if I become better or not. <laughs> so after the warm-up um, where I already try to have uh, control over the speed I'm going to start with making transitions and um, yeah everybody and so you might think oh making transitions and uh, yeah, everybody knows how to do it and how to warm up. It's very simple, but I think it's uh, very important because I believe that making really good transitions actually is very important. If you can have your transitions really, really well, then um, it gets a lot easier. So have one assignment at a time. So when I touch the bit, I want her to slow down. And when I use my leg, I want it to go forward. So what you really want in the transitions, what I always try to teach the horses is that they stay active without the support of my leg. So when I make a transition from trot to walk and I can succeed in teaching her that I don't need my leg to keep her active, then it's very easy when I for example, want to prepare for a pirouette or all those kind of difficult things. And I need to support her with my legs in the collection and I need to make the, uh, the pirouette or, or a uh, half pass or so or whatever. Then it's uh, a lot easier if they already stay active themselves and that they stay nice, light in the contact. So first always what I do is I'm going to make some transitions to trot and then I try to feel, ah, okay, then I make a transition to walk. Okay, then it's very difficult with her to have the relaxation immediately in the walk. So then I release my hands and then she, she goes down in the front and runs away. So she doesn't stay the same. So I want to be able, what I have now, I can relax my hand. She stays like that and then I give leg and then she needs to go forward. So when I want to make a transition to trot, I want to make her immediately go to trot on a very easy and soft leg. If she doesn't listen to my leg, I give another one, a little bit bigger, and then another one. Um, what's important in the transition to trot, what is difficult with this horse particularly, she easily wants to go too much up in the air and not forward. So for me it's very important that I can release my hands that she stays, that she waits, and then I give leg to go forward. And now I needed to do one more leg because it felt she was thinking too much backwards. So I need to repeat. The transition to walk, it's already better, but she's getting a little bit excited. So I need to wait. And I relaxed. And then I go forward. Okay. In my leg, it felt a lot better. I also felt that I lost the contact a little bit and she went a little bit too much down. But okay, for sometimes, oh, now she get things too much passage, so I need to go forward. And I need to go walk. So and when I have then the control in the walk again, try to relax and I try to make a transition to trot. That was much better. And in the beginning, it's not so important if you have a very expressive trot or a big trot, or it's only important that it feels easy so that they are light in the contact and that they listen to your aids. 
Ah, that was not so easy. Okay, it gets better. And I make a transition to trot again. So to keep it really fluently and very easy, with some horses it's more easy than with the other one. With her, this is the work I do most. And walk again, because that's the most difficult part. I mean, I can make her do passage and I can make her do the difficult elements very easy, but the simple things like this, relaxation, in my transitions in between therefore i need to practice this a lot now i make a transition to halt because she's already over reacting i'm waiting till she got a little bit relaxed because it and then i go to walk again and then i do halt again and i do walk again because the the, the next thing i want i want her to slow down very easy on my rein aid, but in the same time, I want her to keep thinking forward with the hind legs. So there is the next difficult thing from the transitions is that you want to go back, but at the same time, you want them to think forward with the hind legs. So when you feel you lose the activity, you need to go forward again. And then you need to repeat, and then I go forward again because I feel she lose the forward tendency. Although she's hot, she needs to stay in front of the leg. So this is also why those, import, why those transitions are so important. So you slow down and you go forward. And by doing all those things, the coordination of the horse gets better and the focus on the rider gets better because you constantly try to change the speed. Slow down, touching with my leg. Relax, relax, okay, now I go a little bit forward because now she starts feeling more relaxed. Then I try if I can go more forward without, you see that she's not steady in the contact at all yet. But making those, tra making those transitions easier and better helps you to get it all more smooth. Uh, now it gets a little better and then I make a transition to walk again and try if I can have a relaxed no and then I halt because it was not good she wasn't relaxed at all then I wait a little bit till she feels oh, okay relaxed and then I go forward again try to have the walk relaxed Try to relax my hand. She's not allowed already to think to trot. And what I want is that the position of the head stays exactly stable and relaxed, which is now not ideal because she thinks, oh, I need to go, I need to go. No, I want you to stay relaxed. Ah, nay, and relaxed again. So besides the warming up, this is also a very important piece of the puzzle that you can have your transitions how you want and whenever you want and not that your horse is already anticipating and doing the job for you before you even ask something. That's, that's very difficult. So and if you did the walk, trot, trot, walk and when that's getting better you can also Okay, it depends of course on your horse. What I'm going to do with her is uh, walk, canter, canter, walk. You can also of course with the young horses do uh, trot canter, which I also do with older horses because in the Grand Prix you need to do passage canter. There's also another transition. First of all, I want her to re be relaxed again. So that's good. Then I can make a transition to canter. And what is also important when you make a transition from walk to canter is that immediately she needs to react on a very light leg. Well, in her case, that's not the, the biggest issue. And when I go back to walk, it needs to be fluent. And I, yeah, she, she still doesn't do it well because she gets too active. So then I can decide to halt again. Then I, no, I relax. 
first and then I go to canter again. That was not good, so I immediately repeat. Because now she's already going to anticipate on what she, she thinks she needs to do and then it's my job to do it differently and make her wait. Because I, I like it if they work for you, but if they overdo it, then it's not in my control anymore and then it's not good. So of course, if they understand a little bit what needs to happen, it's fine, but they always need to wait until you say that she can go. She's still not relaxed enough. Yeah. So when she finally thinks, oh, I just need to walk, then I make the transition to canter again. And then you saw it was much better. So, and transitions you can also make in the... Uh, in the canter or trot itself. So you can go forward, that's also a transition. So I release my hands and I go forward on the leg. And then I slow down a little soft with my hands and I sit a little bit heavier. And then when I slow down, I try to relax my hand and she's not allowed to go forward. And then I give a little bit leg and she needs to go forward again. Ah, and I have a little break. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's all not really perfect. Although I'm schooling her already to the Grand Prix, this is the work actually I'm working on most because that's the most difficult part. Give her some passage or changes or whatever and she, she really do it easily. But this part of the training, that I can make my transitions in the right way, that I can make a... And I believe that's kind of the basics. You need to improve with your horse. And some horses are just easier in those kind of things than other horses. So I really wanted to show this part of training with her. So you can see that, uh, yeah, with us it's also not perfect. And uh, we really try to, uh, to get better also in this part. This was the video about uh, how to make the transitions. As you could have seen, it was also not super easy for me, um, but uh, yeah, I still need to work on that. So it's also very important that you find a really nice trainer who can help you with this because um, yeah, I think it's very important to do this well. You could have seen that uh, I still don't have it perfect yet, so I'm keep on practicing. I hope you do too. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down the video and See you next video. Bye bye.